Hey guys, it's Sarah and today we're going to do a tag video. I don't do these very often, but this one popped up in my feed and I was like, you know what? I'm in for this one <laughs> because it's combining two things that I love, which are books and most recently K-pop. Been very, very much into K-pop lately. And so I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and do this tag. This was originally created by Fantasy Book Addict. So I will leave her video down below if you guys want to see it. It is a couple of years old, so it's been out here for a little while. But I'm going to go ahead and do it today. And this tag takes some aspects of K-pop music and the culture of it and relates it to books. So as I go through what the aspects of the K-pop culture are, I'm going to talk a little bit about the groups I'm enjoying. I kind of have four major ones that I'm on rotation that I'm on repeat for listening to. So I'll talk a little bit about those throughout the questions as well. So the four groups I'm going to talk about, obviously Stray Kids is my number one K-pop group. <laughs> I love them so much. Um, number two would be ATs. We actually went to their concert um, in Arlington, Texas. I went and took my daughter with me in July. So that was incredible. Um, I have also been really getting to in Hypen lately. So I'll probably talk about them a little bit. And then P1 Harmony is starting to make its way into my playlist as well. I've been really enjoying their music. Okay, the first question is bias. Now, what is a bias? <laughs> in K-pop, a bias is your favorite member of a group. So that's like, that's your favorite member. That's your number one. This is the person that you enjoy the most. And I, my bias in Stray Kids is Hyunjin. He's my ultimate bias. Out of all the K-pop people on the planet, he is it. Um, he is gorgeous. He's also incredibly talented. It's kind of stupid how good of a dancer he is. It's, I could watch him perform all day, every day. It's incredible to watch him because he really transforms when he's on stage versus his everyday personality that I see as well. Um, it's insane to me, but he's my bias in Stray Kids. In ATs, my bias is Sung Wah. Uh, he's also another incredible performer and his voice is just he does a lot of different things with his voice, which is really impressive. Um, and then in, in Hypen, I really like Jay. I really like Jay. Um, still learning more about him, but he's the one I've been kind of gravitating towards whenever I watch their videos and stuff. And then in P1 Harmony, it's Kiho. And his is not only his voice, he is very, very underrated. His voice is incredible. He did a cover of John Legend's all of me. And it was stunning. I'll link it down below. If you guys are interested in watching it, it is stunning. His voice. I was just like floored. So he has a fantastic voice and his personality. He is the funniest, sassiest, does not care <laughs> person. And I love it. So, um, yeah, he's my bias in P1 Harmony. Okay. So what does the bias question mean in this tag. So my bias for books is what's your favorite book of all time. So for that, for me, it's Harry Potter, the entire series. I love the Harry Potter series as a whole, start to finish. It is my absolute number one favorite that will never change. <laughs> um, I just, I love the story. I love the world. I love the characters. I love the creativeness of it. I just, it's truly something that transforms my reading. And when I'm, when I'm in it, I feel like I'm there and I just absolutely love everything about Harry Potter. Okay. The next question is your bias wrecker. What is a bias wrecker? Now we're talking W R E C K E R. That's how you spell wrecker. Yes. <laughs> so what's a bias wrecker in K-pop? That is a member of a group that, um, takes you by surprise or distracts you from your bias. So like, this is my bias person, but this person's like creeping up on me or surprising me every so often or distracting me. So that's what a bias wrecker is. So for my, I have wreckers in every group, um, for stray kids, it's Lino. Um, and a little bit of IN. he's creeping up on me as well, but Lino big time, big time in eighties. <laughs> so this is eighties is interesting because, um, I would, I would have said, before July that my big bias record would be Mingy. But after seeing them live, Yo Song, which took me by complete surprise. 
I would never have thought that Yosong would be like even really on my radar that much. But after seeing them live, I'm not sleeping on that anymore. Um, Yosong is actually my daughter's bias, which is really funny. Her reaction at the concert was hilarious. <laughs> um, okay, so that's for ATs. For in Hypen, my bias record is Jungwon. Really enjoying him. And in P1 Harmony, I don't think I have one yet. I feel like, I don't know. I haven't decided in that one yet. I just, I need to listen to them more. I need to watch them a little bit more. So we'll see. But for the books, uh, the bias record prompt is what is a book that took you by complete surprise? And for me, that's going to be The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. I picked this up not expecting much out of it. I just thought it would be like, you know, kind of cutesy fun romance. You know, I'll just read it and, you know, see what all the hype is. I loved this. Really shocked me how much I enjoyed this book. I, I don't know, man. I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was more than just a romance. I'll say that there was some deeper things happening in here that both of the main characters were dealing with. And it just brought it to a whole new level for me. The spice factor in here was fantastic as well. This is a very spicy book, but I just enjoyed it so much more than I thought because I thought it was going to be a little bit more surface level as far as romance goes. But no, it was, I enjoyed it so much to the point where I have bought more of her books and I'm very excited to read them. The next question is comeback stage. And in K-pop, that is um, a comeback is when they are releasing a new album. They call it a comeback. And it's it's a whole thing where weeks ahead of the release of the album, there's videos, there's teasers, there's interviews, there's, um, you know, just like little hints and things to come, appearances, stuff like that. So it's it's a whole, whole lot of buildup until the album is actually released. So that's what a comeback is called. So when people talk about comeback season or Stray Kids is having a comeback, that's what that means. They're releasing a new album and there's a whole lot of things happening leading up to it. And a comeback stage is when they are performing their new, either multiple songs or sometimes just the title track off of their new um, album that they're performing that live. So so for comeback stage for the question is what is your most anticipated book for the rest of the year? And that one for me is absolutely Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune, which is coming out next month. I already have it pre-ordered. It's on the way to me. And this is the sequel to House in the Cerulean Sea, which I will be rereading before I pick this one up. I'm planning to read both of those in September because I've been wanting to reread House in the Cerulean Sea anyway. So this is just the perfect time to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to read them back to back. And I'm so excited to get back into this world with these characters because House in the Cerulean Sea is in a top 10 for me of books of all time. I loved it that much. So I am hoping my reread is going to go as well. I don't anticipate it not being that, but I am very, very much anticipating this and I will be reading it very quickly after I have it in my hands. The next question is trainee. Um, so trainee in K-pop is somebody who is training to become a K-pop idol. And they actually have these companies that develop these groups and they pick the members and they sponsor them and they, you know, like they, the groups are under these labels and people will go through a training period to try to get into a group to do this. And so that's, those are trainees. Those are the people who are training to become idols. Um, so for this question, it is what is a debut that you are most looking forward to? This one is tricky for me because I'm not really anticipating debuts anymore. <laughs> I have been uh, burned a little too many times with picking up debuts and not enjoying them. So I, I do have a book though that it's not a debut, but it is a sophomore novel. So this author has only written one book previously, which I read and absolutely loved, five-starred love, love, loved. And the new one coming out early next year, I am very much anticipating because of the subject matter of it. And that is The Sirens by Amelia Hart. I loved her first book, Wayward, so much. That was a fantastic debut. <laughs> but this one is her sophomore novel. So I'm very excited to see what she's going to do next. This one is Mermaids at Sirens. And I am so here for that. And the cover is stunning. The sprayed edges are stunning. I cannot wait to get my hands on this book. This will definitely be one that I'm going to be reading right away when I get it. I believe it comes out early next year. 
um, I'll put the date down here because I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it is coming out early next year. So I am very, very, very much anticipating that one. Okay. The next prompt is Aegyo. Now, what this means in Korean is being cute or presenting yourself as cute or charming, you know, just acting cutesy, uh, things like that. So, um, yeah, I, I see idols do this all the time and the fans always request them to do like sort of cute little things so they can get pictures and stuff. Um, so for this one, the book prompt is to um, feature a book that has a very cute romance. And the one that always comes to mind when I think about cute romances is Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This romance, you guys, I was swooning. The romance between Luke and Oliver in this story is just, it's the cutest thing ever. <laughs> and I, I think part of it is also, I listened to this on audiobook and the narrator, the way he narrated both Luke and Oliver and their characters was just so adorable. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my gosh, I love this so much. And like, this is one of my favorite romances because I just, I loved them separately, but I also loved them together as well. And the way that they would fight it all the time was also adorable because I'm, because it was just like, come on, like, <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you fighting this? It's so obvious. But yeah, I just, I thought this was so adorable. So one of my favorite romances. The next one is unhelpful guides. <laughs> so this one kind of made me giggle a little bit. So a guide for K-pop is literally a video that will highlight a group um, kind of all about them, like, you know, their members. It'll highlight all the members and kind of their attributes and um, things about them, things about them as a group, um, kind of how they formed um, you know, do they have any concepts behind them? Stuff like that. So it's a, it's something where you like watch a guide and sometimes they, they'll come out every year as the group grows and stuff. Um, and it'll highlight some of their music and videos and things like that. So an unhelpful guide, it was really funny because there are lots of guides out there that you can find, but a lot of them are not very helpful. So that's really funny. Um, so for the prompt for this one is an underrated book that you think everyone should read. For me, I'm going to say A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft because this one took me by complete surprise. I picked this up when the publisher sent me an arc of it and I just ended up falling completely in love with it. I loved the story. I loved the magic in here. I loved the atmosphere. It was very atmospheric and it just, I don't know. I was so enraptured in the story the entire time that I was reading it. It really took me by surprise. I absolutely loved this one. And it made me pick up her other books, which I have them. <laughs> she has another one coming out as well that I'm, I'll am i probably end up grabbing as well. But it definitely put this author on the radar for me. So I think this is underrated because I don't really hear many people talk about Alison Saft, period. She has three books out. Um, and then she has two more coming out soon as well. So it... It definitely is an author I'm looking more into and um, just want to read more from. So, and I had never heard of her. I had never heard of this book before the publisher sent it to me. So it was just, yeah. And I just don't hear anyone else talk about it. Okay. The next one is visuals. What does visuals mean in K-pop? <laughs> uh, that means the way that the members look. Basically, if someone talks about the visuals, like in a music video or something, or in photos, like photo shoots or something, it means that's how, it's what the members look like their face, their hair, their clothes, like anything. Um, so that's what that means. So this question is a book with a beautiful cover. And this is a book that I love, love this book. This is one of my favorite books from one of my favorite authors. And I don't talk about it a whole, whole lot. Um, and I don't hear a lot of other people talk about it either. I think there was a little bit of buzz when it came out, but um, Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. I love this cover. It is beautiful. Like, and it makes sense for the story as well. Um, when you read the story, it makes sense with like the moths and stuff. But I don't know, this cover always, it just stands out to me. Um, and I absolutely love it. And this book is, again, fantastic. Fantastic. Love it. Okay, the next question is music shows. So that is, you know, making an appearance on a any type of show, like an award show, um, a variety show. They have a lot of those as well that they are featured on, um, showcase stuff, anything like that. So the prompt for this one is the best audiobook. 
uh, I listen to a lot of audiobooks, like a lot of audiobooks, and a lot of them are very, very good. Um, but I think my favorite audiobook of all time, to be honest with you, is probably Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is narrated by Ray Porter. And the way he narrated this book was just phenomenal. It just because his tone and his cadence really matched the character in here and Andy Weir's writing. He writes science fiction, but there's humor woven in throughout it. And just the way that Ray Porter portrayed that was perfect to me. I really do think that this is the best audiobook I've ever listened to. Those are big words, but I'm, I'm standing by it <laughs> as of right now. So I'm going to say this one. Okay, the next one is All Kill. That means that the group uh, achieves um, like music chart recognition or, you know, their, their charting, like their stuff is successful. That's what All Kill means. Um, so like maybe they, they end up being worth the hype because the fans are enjoying them um, and supporting them and stuff. So this book question is a book, a hyped book that you felt was worth the hype that lived up to it. And for me, Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This 1000% lived up to the hype. I did not read this right away when I got it. I ended up pre-ordering this on Amazon solely because of the original edges that were sprayed onto these spines. I pre-ordered it, I think a month before it came out. I was just browsing and I saw it pop up in an ad, I think on Amazon. And I was like, what is this? There are dragons on the spine, what's happening? And I was, I, I ordered it without knowing anything about it. Absolutely nothing. I don't even know that I read the synopsis, to be honest. It was a pure aesthetic thing for me when I pre-ordered it. And then it came out and I got it and it blew up after that. It took a few months for this to blow up. And then when it did, I was like, oh, well, now I need to read it crap. <laughs> I need to read it because everyone else is reading it and loving it and blah, blah, blah. And now it's getting hard to get. And, um, yeah, it 1000% lived up to the hype for me. One of my favorite fantasy books of all time. Is it a top 10 book? Maybe I read it twice last year. I read it two times. I read it when I originally read it. And then a couple months later, I read it again, right before Iron Flame came out. So and I'm obsessed, <laughs> obsessed with this world. Cannot wait for number three. Uh, yeah, so definitely for me, this one lived up to the hype. The next question is leader. So a leader in K-pop is every group has a leader. So kind of the go-to person, the person who um, leads the group is a bit of a representative for the group. Um doesn't necessarily make all the decisions, I would say that, but kind of the the go-to person, especially with negotiations or with, um, you know, publicity and stuff like that. Like this person is the person that kind of goes to every K-pop group, including the female groups have that. So um, yeah, so every, every group has that. Now, this one is a book that had a big impact on you. And for me, that is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This book really changed the way that I read. I read this, well, it might have been for a book club, quite possibly. And when I was reading it, I don't know, I was just kind of in in a phase in my reading where I was just reading whatever. I didn't really like know what I gravitated towards. I was just reading books that they sounded good and it was just fine. I wasn't reading a ton at that point. But when I picked this up, I was floored. <laughs> and just the concept of it and the way that it challenged me, this book made me realize that these are the types of books that I want to be reading. So it definitely got me into the thriller genre, for sure, and got me into the psychological side of thrillers. And I just now I want books that shock me. That's what I want. Um, and it's because of this book. So, okay. And the next question is goodbye stage. And in K-pop, that is basically kind of their final performance 
for whatever it is that they're promoting. So when they come to the end of uh, promoting a new album or something, it's kind of like their last performance that they're doing for that. And then they start focusing on the next thing coming up. So that's what a goodbye stage is. So the question for this one is, what is a series finale that you thought was amazing? And for me, we're going to circle back to Harry Potter. (laughs) I thought the Deathly Hallows was a fantastic series finisher because I love the way that this book wrapped up. I loved how much happens in here because so much happens in here. And I, I just really liked the way that Harry Potter ended. I thought it was a great ending. I, ne- I never finished Harry Potter thinking I wanted it to go a different way or it should have been this or whatever. I thought it was great. So um, definitely probably my favorite series finale. Okay, so those were the main questions. There are some bonus questions, which of course I'm going to answer. So the first one is fan chance. Um, so a fan chant is, is basically something that the fans will either come up with, or sometimes a group will just accidentally come up with something and then the fans latch onto it and they start doing it at their shows. And so they'll chant something while they're singing a song or whatever, uh, during their shows and it just kind of becomes a thing. So that's what that is. And the question for this is what is a book that you always recommend? And one of my number one recommendations when I was working at Barnes and Noble is I would always recommend The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides if no one had read it yet. <laughs> this is a very popular book. So a lot of times I would come across people who have read it, but if they hadn't, I would say, please read this book. If you're looking for a, like a really good thriller, especially on the psychological side, not only is it a psychological thriller, it deals with a psychologist in here as well. And this is another book that really just kind of floored me and took my breath away. I absolutely loved this one. So this is one, this was one of my number one recommendations all the time. Okay. The next one is Machne. What is a Machne? A Machne is the youngest member of any given group. So whoever the baby is, <laughs> the youngest member, they are called the Machne. And uh, for this one, the question is, what is a new author that you think everyone should read? Now, this is not necessarily a new author. This author has been published for a little bit, but she only has three books published. So I still consider her a little bit new-ish, I would say, just because she doesn't have this huge backlog or anything. But it's an author that I really, really have enjoyed. And like, I'm going to look forward to her next release. And that is Stacey Willingham. My favorite of hers has been A Flicker in the Dark, which was her debut, by the way. Um, her other two books I did really love as well. But this one was so good. <laughs> um, I just loved the feel of this one and the atmosphere of this one it was really good. She writes locations very, very well. I'll say that for sure. Um, but this one was probably her faster paced book and I just, I adored it. I loved it so much. Like recommend this one as well, but Again, she's only written three books, so um, she, I feel like she's still not necessarily a newcomer necessarily, but she's also not been around for, you know, 10, 20 years. So um, I would say, I would say her, especially if you like mystery thrillers, I think she's a really good one to get into. Okay, the next one is The Rap Line. <laughs> what is a rap line? Um, that is the members in any given group who are the rappers of the group, the main rappers. So the question for this one is a book or author um, who has a beautiful writing style. And so for that, I'm going to go with Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This book is so beautiful. (laughs) Um, This is another book that I would actually really like to reread because I loved this book so much. And not only is it just beautiful. It's just a beautiful book, but the writing in here is fantastic. It's very whimsical, which I don't normally gravitate towards, but for me in this one, it really worked with the storyline. It like, it needed to be written this way and it was just so good. Um, yeah, so definitely one of the books that I think has the most beautiful writing style that I have read so far. Okay. A couple more. Uh, so next one is vocal line. So that is the main singers, in the group. Um, so for the vocal line, the question is your favorite audiobook narrator, which for me is Her Majesty Julia Whelan. <laughs> I love her narration. Always, 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 always. A lot of times her narration can help me enjoy a book a little bit more as well. Um, but she has 
narrated things um, by Kristen Hanna, Taylor Jenkins Reid, just some of my favorite authors. She has narrated their uh, books. So I just, I love listening to her. I love her inflections. I love the voices that she uses for different characters. Um, her emotion comes through, which is a big thing, you know, in audiobook narration. If you feel that emotion, it helps, it really brings you into the story more. And basically, if there's an audiobook out there that I'm, or there's a book out there that I'm planning to read and she narrates the audiobook, I'm listening to it. Like, not even a question. Okay, next question is the dance line. So here we go. Here are the main dancers of the group. Okay, so the question for this one is a book that is uh, fast paced. And for me, hmm, Drowning by TJ Newman. Um, all the whole two of her books I've read, because <laughs> that's all she has so far. Her third one just came out and it's on its way to me right now. I will be reading that very soon here. But her books are very fast paced because they involve plane crashes in some way, shape, or form. A plane going down um, something happening on a plane, like plane emergencies. This one, it's just, it's start to finish, <laughs> just nonstop action and what's happening and how, how are we going to survive this? And it's not very long. So there's so much packed in here, but this one was just perfect. Okay. Uh, the last one is, um, a word that I cannot find a pronunciation for, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> but basically, um, it's the Korean word for foreigner or somebody who is not from Korea. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I'm not going to get it right. And I just don't want to do that. So um, the prompt for this one is what is your favorite foreign author? So somebody, an author who is not from your country. So for me, since I live in America, <laughs> that's going to be, um, I'm going to say Frederick Bachman. He is from Sweden and his books, you guys, I love, 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 love his writing. Love, 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 love. I love Beartown. I might reread this one, to be honest with you. I haven't read the third book in this series yet, but I think I might reread books one and two, and then dive into the third one. I've heard you don't really have to, but I kind of just want to because I love this book so much. And I read this before I was kind of tabbing things and um, doing all that stuff. So I, I feel like this might be one that I want to revisit and, you know, like tab it up and stuff. I might do that. Like that's something I'm heavily, heavily considering for next year, but I love his writing. It it's impactful. He puts one-liners in here that are just so good. And it really makes you like, it made me stop reading and think like I would stop reading and go, that's a good line. What would that mean? Like, what would that look like? <laughs> I can't imagine this or like, that's something to really think about. And that's a great perspective. And, you know, he does that throughout his books. And, um, I've read a few of his books and I just absolutely love them. He's an author that I want to read everything from. Haven't gotten there yet, but, um, I have read quite a bit. So I just, He's definitely a favorite of mine for sure. Okay, guys, that is it. That is the books and K-pop tag. Thank you for joining me today. And I'm going to leave some links down below. Um, I will leave that link to Kiho uh, with his cover of the John Legend song. I will leave some of my favorite. Mm, let me think. That would be hard. I was going to say some of my, like one of my, my favorite songs from each group, but that would be hard. Um, I will link what I'm currently listening to on repeat from each group. One song. That's going to be hard to do, <laughs> but I'll do it. So um, just in case you guys are curious, click them if you want. Don't click them if you don't want to. I don't care. Um, but yeah. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I will see you guys again soon. Have a great day.